my name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slay This by Modded. We're going to be going to the jungle yet again, moving on to our next character in the line. It'll be Glutton. Uh, Alright, so Glutton starts with 120 max HP. A tormented being seeking to end its misery consumes its own life force to hunt its next meal. Uh, starts with the eternal hunger. At the start of your turn, lose one HP and draw one card. Now, the most important thing to know about this character is the way in which it differentiates itself from other characters in the base game in that you use your health much more readily as a resource. It's closer to how the Ironclad kind of uses health as a resource in a couple of builds, uh, except you don't necessarily have the same ability to block. So you can't really run those same kinds of hybrid builds. Instead, you run a bunch of healing and max HP improvement. Okay, obtain a random rare. Enemies in X3 have 1 HP. Ooh, enemies in X3 have 1 HP. I could snipe out one elite over here with it, probably. I get a maximum of two elites on this entire path. Uh, if I start off on this line, I can actually hit up a rest, then dodge across after I get these two elites to hit up a rest, shop, rest, question mark, question mark, rest. Okay. Straight up remove two strikes at the very start there. More than happy to. I'll even use the flail here because I think it'll probably save me a turn's worth of combat. Beautiful. Brace Tantrum Rapacity. Huh. I kind of want to take Tantrum just to have some damage already in the deck, but I'll pass. Hopefully I don't live to regret that. Well, hopefully I do live, but hopefully I don't regret that. Let me just clarify there because I understand that the game is hearing me while I say this and saying, Oh, okay, well, hopefully you don't live. Well, I can deal with that. No, still got to live, game. Yearn, draw a card if it's not a status or a curse. Create an echo of it that costs one less. I mean, the deck's relatively thin. I could take that yearn. Gets me 103 gold. Yeah, I'll take the yearn. I'll take the 103 gold. Then I'll move over to his shop here. And... Not really find anything I'm looking for. I guess the closest is Demolish here. So Demolish would, if it was copied by Yearn, would cost zero and be Ethereal Exhaust, which means that when I play the uh, the Echo in my hand, the Ethereal Exhaust one, it would do its effect of deal four damage to all enemies and then the Exhaust effect of four damage to all enemies three times. So that's why I'm going to try and remove a bunch of cards from my deck that don't have on Exhaust effects and just try and Yearn a bunch. Um... It is definitely a strategy that relies on getting lucky. But I don't know. I'm feeling it. Let's go. All right. One in three. Damn it. Yearn fails. What's Yearn upgrade to? Not exhaust? Yikes. I was hoping it was two copies. All right. Easy defense strike right here, and um, still don't need to put that. Nope, none of that. Thank you. I don't know how I'm gonna take out two elites with this build, by the way. It's entirely possible we die here on the first floor because I got really greedy and wanted to get the yearn build off the ground. I'm still with each of these different characters. I'm still trying to learn what builds work for them. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. And we're still up the kill, but we are very, very close to half HP right now. We've got the perfect amount of HP this turn, but it gets worse from here on out. Mug, deal 10 damage, gain 15 gold. I'll just take a single copy of that just to help us with our damage problem. And I'll use an attack potion here looking for AoE. Oh, we got Lash Out. That's AoE. Woo! 
that was all wrong. Should have played the flail rather than demolish and then tried to get the demolish to get hit by lash out. Oh well. At least thanks to the lash out, we will be getting the first sentry down. Sorry, the first elite down and the elite being a sentry. Don't need to use Flail here. I don't kill the enemy this turn. May as well kill them over two more turns anyway. Beetle Shell. Every tenth time you gain block from a card, gain double the block as well as just like a bunch of stuff that I can't really do. And I guess I'll upgrade Yearn. Gone all the way with this. I'm just trying to see if it is a thing. Especially if I can get more cards in my deck that have effects on exhaust. It could be a thing. I'm probably dead in this combat, but we'll give it a go. Uh huh. I have to launch out these two attacks here because otherwise I'm just not going to kill the enemy before their next attack. In fact, I'm still probably not. Oh, damn. Yeah, we're dead. That's what I get for trying to lean into the memes. Maybe you need a deck that has like a bunch of exhaust effects in it before you pick up the urn rather than the inverse of that. Some builds work, like you can't pick up Entrench first and then aim for, you know, Barricade, High Defense cards and Body Slam. You really need the other things in the deck first and then you get your Entrench. So maybe that's, uh, maybe that's how I should be looking at this. Just want as many upgrades as I can get on the first floor. Get that 100 gold. We have an early shop on this side. Okay. I think we're more than fine to kill this Acid Slime next turn. Just because of how many strikes are in this deck. Goodbye, Acid Slime, and hello. I'm gonna take Strain. It only applies one week, so as long as I use it at the end of my turn, I'm fine. Ooh, Nunchku. Every time we play 10 attacks, gain an energy. More than happy to. Strain also works into the debuff build for this character, which I am more than happy to explore. I've, in fact, been looking for it for a while. Decrepit Strike immediately! Deal 10 damage. If you're weak, deal 10 damage two additional times. Hell yes. Uh, letters from her. Letters from her. Letters to her, rather. Uh, obtain a new letter at every future non-boss chest. For every letter, shuffle one letter into your deck at the start of combat, and those letters give you things like three points of strength, or energy, or temporary HP. I quite like it, especially this early in the game. I'm going to have a lot of them in the deck. So it's now card removal or chomp. A pre-upgraded chomp deal 21 damage heal for unblocked damage dealt. I feel like that's impossible to turn down. I really like the warp tongs. I think they're super powerful. So that frontliner is a strike and fire potion away from dead. Or hell, I could even just yomp him. That was a good yomping. Great. Thank you, Nunchku, for allowing me to play an extra attack that turn. One. Ooh, yeah, that's enough defense. Hell yes. All courtesy of the, uh, the Warp Tongs. 
Goodbye, Sentry. Hello, Letter Opener. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. It's not going to happen often. You don't want the Decrepit Strike definitely upgraded. Okay. Well, I just Mega Chomp there. Gosh, I love how good this Chomp is, yo. Bite, Rapacity, Gnawing Hunger. I'll turn all of those down. Thank you very much. Letters to her. Get my next one. Ornamental Fan. If you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. We do that a lot. Do I have a quest to... No, okay. Um, I'll upgrade strain. Uh, I was just checking if I had a quest to go to a bonfire. Otherwise, I will avoid it. Or even to go through a portal, and we have neither. There's no need to chomp there. Would have left me open to a bunch of damage. Alright. Nope. Hardcore knowing all those. We are just going for a bunch of upgrades here on the flo uh, first floor, right? Whoa, yes! Let's take the Runic Icosahedron. I'm going to roll with it. Of course I am. 15, draw an additional card every single turn. Not bad. Could be a hell of a lot worse. Mm. Alright, we'll have this Rosebush down soon enough. Don't you worry. Oh, gosh. How does my hand get worse? Right, we've got this. Defend. Decrepit. Another pre-upgraded... Well, not pre-upgraded. Sorry. Another chomp, though? I think I'll pass that one. Oh, but I could immediately upgrade it. No, I go here. I'm looking for toke. Okay, we don't have toke. That's a shame. Alright, I'm going to transform a strike because they are really low value. Hey! I just removed a strike from the deck and gained a feed. Hell yes. Give me that letter. Oh! Hell yeah! Wait. Then we strain. Then we decrepit strike for 30 damage. Oh, got a runic icosahedron, of course. Obtain a random rare potion. Remove all debuffs from ourselves. Okay, not bad. So we'll be using our max HP as a resource here the entire time just to try and live. Using our max HP as a resource to try and live. No, using our max HP as a resource. So I'll be hitting where I otherwise might not. Just because we can't reliably defend ourselves, so we may as well just aggress. This is very much kind of a berserker type class. I can't believe that we're always getting strain and decrepit strike in the same hand. I'm really pleased by it. So now I'm looking for feed in the next hand. I'll pass a turn and draw six next turn. Come on, feed. Yeah, get that four max HP. Nostalgia. Whenever you exhaust a non-ethereal attack or skill, create an echo of it. We, like, we exhaust chomp, but that's about it. And I guess feed, but not really happily. Fast, draw three cards, shuffle two hunger pangs into your discard pile. They damage you, but draw you more cards. I don't know if we need that. Deal damage equal to the number of cards in your deck. Yeah, it's extremely not useful for us. All right, we'll turn all of those down. 
Empty cage. And we'll pick up, remove two cards from your deck. I could Runic Pyramid at the end of your turn. You no longer discard your hand. Or I could draw one fewer cards each turn and gain energy at the start of my turn. Drawing one less card each turn is actually really difficult. But the Eternal Hunger does give us one more card a turn. So I'm only down to five. A standard draw. I really do want the extra energy as well. All right, we'll go to the jungle, obviously. Okay. Somehow I feel like we're not long for this world. I'll explain what I mean by that soon. Okay, so we can't just use the feed straight up to kill the frontliner. We have to use something before it. Oh, Runic Icosahedron. Got to remember to roll that. Got to remember to roll that every single fight at the very start. Okay. So Mulligan is retain, discard your hand, and draw that many cards. any of that thank you i get to remove the pain from my deck super soon i am very keen on that okay, strike i'll actually just feed for the extra damage here damn it runic icosahedron okay one strength one dex one focus that's pretty good All I gotta do is roll a 20 and it becomes a downside free energy relic. Great damage there. Revivification. Whenever you heal HP, heal a 2 additional HP. We only heal HP in very large amounts, so it's a very small increase for us, like percentage wise. Malignancy. Unplayable retain. If this card is exhausted, gain to intangible. It's pre upgraded as well. We have no way to exhaust it in the deck though. Obviously, we remove pain. Yeah, I don't want to splash this into becoming a discard build. I kind of just want it to be like a like a max HP build. So I'm not looking for chomp now. I'm looking for... Oh, what's it called? Feed or something? No, not feed. I already have a feed in the deck. It's like eat alive. Okay, while wandering the jungle, you come across a birthday cake. A small note sits next to the cake. It reads, Happy birthday, MTS. Please only take one slice. Kyo. Of course, I mentioned before that this is the Mod Jam Act, uh, created over three days to celebrate the one-year anniversary of the release of MTS, Mob the Spy. Uh, what is Eternal Shame? We have Eternal Hunger already. I wonder if it's related. So we can get 20 max HP. I'm assuming Eternal Shame is... Oh, wait. Is Shame the frailty? I'm taking it. Uh, at the start of combat, shovel a Shame into your deck. Okay. Looking around, you see nothing stopping you from taking the whole cake. It is extremely tasty, but soon you are overcome by a sense of shame at the atrocity you've committed. Lost in the jungle, you lose your orientation, and the way ahead is blocked by rubble. You cannot move any further. Where should you turn to to climb higher? I'll definitely take the 18 damage rather than a curse of writhe. You climb a nearby vine, the weight of your relics dragging you down as the vine's thorns dig into your hand. As you reach the canopy, you spot a clearing nearby. I wonder if... So I have nine relics. I wonder if you take two times your relics in damage there, right? Because it says the weight of your relics dragging you down. So we'll go through the clearing. You reach a clearing in the jungle. It looks like someone has been digging here recently. And if you have the shovel, you can interact. But unfortunately, I just get to look around. And in looking around, you look around and spot an abandoned shovel. This will prove useful later on. Unfortunately, you're still lost. So I need to try and get a shovel before I get to that event because that seems interesting. I'm going to dig up a relic though. Wax seal. Relics in shop cost 20% less. Right click at a shop to activate to borrow 100 gold. Add a curse to your deck until you pay it back. Time to go for an elite. This is Kasakara. It consumes carcass sacks. 
and heals HP or heals HP equal to their HP and gains three strength for each carcass set. Got it. Get a random common potion, but I have no space for it, so it's fine. Bottomless stomach. So you summon two carcass stacks here. I'll probably just kill those. They are minion enemies, sadly. So that means the feed isn't going to allow me to kill them for an extra effect. Okay. So this is the shame. At the end of your turn, gain one frail. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. We don't defend enough to really care about frailty. So now we should probably just go for straight up the back line. Bye bye, Kasakara. We'll take Lucky Sock. Gold gain in combat is increased by 25%. We don't gain any gold in combat, so that's not going to be relevant for us, I think. Devar would allow us to actually burn out the curse in our deck currently. Shed Fat enables the same thing, actually. I think I'll take Shed Fat. Dig yet again. Getting dentures. Whenever you play a power, add a copy of it to your discard pile 50% of the time. Letters to her. Hell yes. Funnel. At the end of your turn, unused energy is converted to four block each. Sure. We have difficulty gaining block with this deck anyway. So we'll dig, get another relic. Poopsie roll. At the start of combat, deal damage equal to 40% of your missing HP to all enemies. This can be lethal. Straight up, if you just have low HP and you go through a bunch of fights as the glutton. It can be wild. Uh, so this would be 50 gold because of the lucky sock, right? Inflatable hammer. Start each combat with three strength. Whenever you play an attack, lose one strength this turn. How many attacks do we play in a turn? So consider if we play three attacks in a turn, we're dealing three extra damage, two extra damage, one extra damage. So we're dealing six extra damage over the course of that turn. If we play a fourth attack, we're dealing five extra damage over the course of that turn. Uh, we only have four energy, so it's likely that we only play four attacks maximum per turn. Does that mean I take the inflatable hammer? I think I do take the inflatable hammer, but the big reason for it is because I have a multi-hit into Decrepit Strike, but I also have Chomp, and it'll heal me for more when I bite someone and have inflatable hammer on. So we'll take that. <laughs> Faux pas. As you walk through a dense portion of the jungle, walls of trees seem to bend and twist into a narrow passageway. You catch a flash of light reflecting off several pairs of eyes skulking in the shadows near the tunnel of trees, waiting for your approach. Obviously, we'll explore the passageway. You decide to explore the strange formation of trees. As you walk the path, you are constantly surrounded by the rustling of leaves, hushed whispers, and muffled laughter. Eventually, you find yourself approaching a clearing in the dense trees with a strange effigy located on the stump right in the center. Just when you think you're walking right into an ambush, a small orange... Okay, so I'm going to assume that... Uh, this should be pronounced fox instead. Because it exists in the game, or rather in the translator's notes for the game, that items like paper frog and the paper crane are on purpose spelt incorrect from animals in the real world because they are not meant to approximate animals in the real world. It's not supposed to place this in the real world. So I'm assuming that Faux or F-A-U-X is the version of Fox that's existing in this world. So I'll say Fox from now on. Be aware, I'm aware that it's pronounced Faux. Uh, leaps from behind a tree and sits at the entrance to the clearing in front of you, eyeing you curiously. Before you can react, he speaks. Are you our new friend? That's not every, every voice is that. Are you our new friend? Chattering voices suddenly fill the forest around you. Oh, I love new friends. Do you think this one will stay a while? Oh, it's been so long. I'm excited to play with you. The fox speaks again. It's going to be so much fun. Don't you agree? A special relic for a curse of shame. We already have shame in our deck. Let's get the special relic. Paper Fox. Whenever you apply weak, apply one additional weak. Whenever you apply vulnerable, apply one additional vulnerable. Okay. 
A hushed silence falls over the clearing and you can swear you see the fox's expression change to one of deep sadness. You turn to look at a quiet sniffle. You hear to your right, but there's nothing. When you look back, the fox's leader is gone. All that's left is a strange object on the stump, which you decide to take with you, along with a deep sense of shame for having disappointed the forest critters. Unfortunately, as this character, I don't know if we ever... Oh no, three void to the draw pile. Let's... I don't know if we ever apply vulnerable. Okay, Mama Sneko gains one strength every time a minion is damaged, loses two strength at the end of turn. Got it. So I can only prevent two of the Snekos from spawning. Oh, that letter of respect is three cost. I can't play that. Mm, it's definitely like strike, flail, decrepit. Gosh, I wish I was doing more damage there, though. Right. I'm just going straight up for the Mama Sneko from now on. In the same way as I dealt with the... Kakarasa fight? Oh, sorry for forgetting the name, but uh, my brain is not good. My brain, she is not good. Kosha piece. Uh, right click during combat to activate. If you play three skills, three attacks, and then one skill, then one power, you complete the combat. Uh, I'm unlikely to really do that. You can flee the combat. I wonder if you can flee the combat in boss fights. Because it doesn't say not in boss fights. And a lot of the Halation relics that have, you know, fight altering things say excluding bosses or cannot use on a boss fight. This is against a swinging axe trap. Its position is incoming. Intends to attack at the start of its turn. Whenever you play a card, it changes its position between incoming, mid-swing, and resetting. Resetting being green in text, so I'm assuming that's a good one. Runic Icosahedron. Hey! Random rare potion that I don't get to have. I probably should be running... Like, I, I probably should remove a potion from there just so that I can... Hold on to potions from the Runic Icosahedron. Okay, so it's swinging, which means anytime I play an attack, it'll take three damage. Or rather, I take three damage, so I'll play defend here. Now it's resetting, which means it's harmless. Then I play a strike. And then defend and defend. Hell yeah, get it back to resetting. Excellent. Bunch of damage on the swinging axe trap there. And we get to feed on it as well. We actually probably ought to take an elixir here just because it burns out two shames. And especially in a boss fight, it really seems like we should burn those out. I probably just want to dig for another relic though. Unceasing top. Whenever you have no cards in hand during your turn, draw a card. That is unlikely to affect us. Alright. Ooh. Bunch of damage to everyone in turn one. Nice. So, Totem Speaker. This enemy intends to use a buff. Whenever a totem dies, all enemies gain one strength. And it has totemic might. If any totems are still alive, it is immune to damage. There's a menacing totem, protecting totem, encouraging totem, and there are totems all the way up. It's totems the entire way down. We get to heal to full on that 19, which is not bad, but still. So we'll elixir here to burn the shames out of our deck before we draw. So now I'm looking to kill the bottom liner here if I have the ability to. So what? 19, 9, 19. So 19 twice is 38, and then 9. Okay, so... I can kill the bottom line, but I have to literally launch all attacks at it. 
But I have 19 and then 20 if I just launch these two and then launch the strike upwards. So it's flail, strain, and then this strike is going to be weakened, but it's going to enable me to kill this menacing totem. So there goes the menacing totem, and another totem comes down. This is the enriching totem. It is stunned because it came down this turn, so obviously it doesn't have an intent yet. Ooh, Decrepit Strike! The 30 damage on the bottom liner here. Hell yes. Really wish I had the extra energy to use Feed there. Okay. So I can murder the bottom liner here pretty easily, in fact. I should leave Chomp in the deck because I feel like I'm going to need HP later. So we're probably using Defend, Strike, Strike, Strike. So since our least amount of damage needs to be dealt to the Protecting Totem, we'll defend, then strike, strike, and then this one to the bottom line. Great. Two Letters of Love, not half bad. Should just cast them now, right? I don't see any good reason not to. Uh, I kind of feel like just using this strike and then that defend and then shedding fat because these are two quite low power strikes in the deck. Okay, so we'll flail upwards, then decrepit strike downwards. I really hope this is the final one. The Eviscerating Totem. That does not sound good for me. Debilitating as well. Okay, so Totem Counter. Instantly attacks when you play a card that targets all enemies or multiple random enemies. Okay, so Whirlwind is right out. Good thing we don't have that in the deck. Okay, if I use the Holy Water here, I can actually purge myself so that I can kill this Enriching Totem, and that's actually pretty important. So, while I'm working through these, the totem speaker in the back line is just lining up at 30 hit. With all the strength they have from the debilitating totems. Okay, so that's slightly short of 40. Still need to do it. Played the weakness first. The ordering of that turn was all wrong. That's entirely on me. My bad. I mean, obviously, it's entirely on me. I promise you, I'd blame it on someone else if I could, but uh, nope, this one's all my mess up. Hell yeah. This is very much a goodbye totem speaker sitch. Beautiful. 60 HP we lost over the course of that fight. That said, we aren't a defending deck, so. Eat alive! Hey, we found it! Uh, deal seven damage. Gain max HP for each unblocked damage dealt. Ooh, Grand Sneko. I gain energy and transform two cards at the start of your turn. Now, the Grand Sneko used to transform cards without asking you. It would transform two cards in your hand randomly. Does the Grand Sneko Eye transform randomly or with intention? Do you choose, like with the new Grand Sneko, which cards get transformed? Or does it automatically choose for you, like with the old Grand Sneko? Because those are vastly different. We have a deck where 95% of the cards in this deck are garbage, right? It's just basically Strain, Decrepit, Chomp, Eatalite. So, to transform cards other than that would be excellent. But, YOLO, let's go. I'm also going to read the text, by the way. Perplexingly large. Good. Uh, oh, it's the mirror. No. Uh, okay, we're going to need to find ways to heal, I think, and then kill over a bunch of turns. This is going to be difficult. 
Let's see what the Grand Snekwai does. Hey, I do get to choose them. Beautiful. Take it. Yearn and rest. We'll also roll the Runic Icosahedron here. Game fine for you. So I do want Strain to remain in the deck. So I'll play it before I shed that. Because all the rest of that's pretty poor. I need to upgrade Eat Alive as soon as possible. Max HP is going to be really important over the course of this. Transform the two unupgraded strikes. Okay, you can't transform uh, curses with this. Interesting. Good to know. I could have lost HP in order to trigger the extra effect of that. That's just my bad. Alright. The frontliner is down to a low HP value. Now we focus on everyone else. Me, I I forgot that uh, <coughs> Chomp was going to become uncastable if I did that. Oops. And knowing hunger will en enable me to play pain medication, pain meditation rather for extra damage there. The extra draw rather. We get in pain meditation like every time we do this. It's wild. Are you sure this isn't rigged? Come on, let me feed. Oh my god, that's not gonna do it, is it? Woo! Only just. Shovel a hunger pang into your discard pile. But if you transform a status card, it probably just becomes another status card. There's very few in combat transform effects, so I can't guarantee that, but that's probably what happens. Duplicate a card in our deck. Okay. How badly do we want max HP? Because we could duplicate that Eat Alive twice. I'm doing it. I wonder if I should have just duplicated all cards in my deck and become confused, right? Because then I would have had four, six copies of Eat Alive, two copies of Chomp, and be confused as well. Draw one less card each turn. Damn it. Thankfully, we instantly kill everyone, courtesy of the Poopsie Roll. At the start of combat deal, damage equal to 40% of your missing HP to all enemies. Take that. Way too late. Hell yeah! Get that max HP up. Don't need any of those. Do I want to go to the heart? I feel like I'm just dead if I do go for the heart. Oh, I'd like to give myself the opportunity. Oh my gosh, this is going to be like almost an instant kill. Uh-huh. <gasps> Natural 20! Gain extra energy. Hell yeah. So natural 20 is just gain energy at the start of your turn, and you can no longer roll the Icosahedron. If you get a natural 1, you get a, uh, a very negative effect as well, so it does balance out, don't worry. We can play two of our Eater Lives on the same turn, yes. I do have to transform two cards here, damn. Uh, 
That'll have to do. Alright, gambling chip at the start of combat. Discard as many cards as you'd like and then draw that many cards. As well as... Just not going to take anything there either. I want all of the Eater Lives upgraded, but that's just too much right now. I think I'm just digging. More jerky. At the end of Elite Combats, raise your max HP by four. Okay. Hey, look, it's me. Hello, me. It's the Ripsodic Order. Named after yours truly. I know. I still can't believe it either. Wow. So the Grand Sneko effect triggers before Gambling Chip. That's interesting. I think we're done here. Beautiful. I don't really want to heal up at all because I do want the Poopsie Roll to be dealing a bunch of damage for me. Violence got upgraded. Four random attacks from your draw pile. Put them into your hand. Hell yes. Let's form those two. And then let's take all of those. Overreach? Gain one vulnerable? Do I even want that? A20 to heal 20. Yeah, sure. A weak at the end as well. Ow. Please deal more damage to me, though. We'll definitely eat alive. I kind of want a Brewmaster as well. So we get a potion every single turn now. And we got a speed potion this turn. Good. Good to see it. Whole hands garbage. Yes. There's the eat alive I was looking for. But please, raise my max HP more and then damage me more so that the poopsie roll is instantly killing everything that I ever interact with. So we should be coming up on... That's on these two. Yeah, Brewmaster is exactly the bottom card of our deck now. Hey, Decrepit Strike for a bunch of damage here as well. Thank you. All right. Should be able to kill in this upcoming turn at the very least. God, enemy's got a lot of block on him. It had to hit that one. Really? Good lord. Counterbalance. You're in boss and elite fights. Enemy strength gain, block gain, and healing is reduced by half. As well as... Like a hard no there. Obviously don't really want the speed potion, but I will take the emerald key. Bundle of herbs. Right click during combat to activate. Lose one charge. Gain three regen. Whenever you enter a rest site, add one charge. Start with two charges. Uh, we will avoid that. Afternoon tea. Upon resting, gain five regen next combat. We're probably not going to rest. I'm just going to be digging this entire time. Lovely. That is 60 damage straight up. Come on, got two more Eater Lives in this deck that I still need to use. It's also card. Mm, I do want the weakness, okay. Damn shame, chunking up my draws. Don't like that I'm weak in this turn. It's making these Eater Lives less effective. That said, they are free max HP. So 
I can hardly complain that loudly. Couldn't have played knee jerk there, it costs two. Spezia. I mean, I can just transform that right now, right? Does nothing more now that I've already got it in my hand. We can have so much energy and probably still die. Nine damage in two weak, hell yes. Definitely should have just played that scab at the in there, though. It's my bad. Take more damage, damn it. I want to take more damage. I just don't want to do the damage taking myself. Mm, second regen potion. Hell yes. Yearn in this deck doesn't really make sense. Do you get a gain? We get light bulb if you have any unspent energy at the end of your turn. Gain an additional energy next turn. Uh, I'll replace most of them. Okay, there we go. That's much more my speed. Ooh, hell yes. Alright, yeah, we've got Strain and Decrepit Strike. Obviously, we're going to be using those. Goodbye, Spire Growth. Hello, Random Relic. We pick up Boot whenever you deal four or less unlocked attack damage. Increase it to five. Uh, I'll drop the Speed Potion here for Fear. A group of strange men in lab coats spring from the shadows blocking your path. Hello there, Traveler. The group of men in clothes on you. We are having problems with the shadows around here lately. The goddess of death seems to be staring. Say, what do you say? Sorry, do you want to survive the apocalypse? So we're not going to take this because we have enough energy to play almost all of the cards in a hand already ourselves. They're played at no cost. They target random enemies. Actually, no, because we have unceasing top. We'll just draw more cards after that. Sure, we'll take the Papillion Heart here. Uh, very well then. Clunk, clunk, clunk. You wake... Alone, feeling invigorated despite the pain in your neck, you seem to get emotionally easier. We will recall, probably going to be dying to the heart here, uh, if not the ornate mirror, but... Yeah, so now it's already dealing 26 damage back to me. Respect, love, no letter of respect, beautiful. Uh, I'll throw in a fear potion just so that I get more from the eat alive. I really feel like I just need to be attacking here. Like, I have no defense. I can't just defend and attack in equal measure here. That's not how this deck works. Uh, so I'm going to use both of the regen potions here as well. Oh, cool. You just summoned a mirror image of me. Nice. I guess I should focus on it, sure. There you go, get some max HP. Uh, I really need that chomp. Burn out a bunch of cards in the deck that we definitely don't want there. So the enemy's attack increases by 8. And I get 10 HP. Probably not worth it. Specifically because I'll be vulnerable for 2 turns. So I also have to take extra damage next turn. Thanks to Light Bulb. By turning down playing that card, I get to draw an extra card this turn at the very least. Okay. Unfortunately, that shame is still in the deck. Wait, Papillion Heart. You didn't play all of the cards in my hand. What? What happened, Papillion Heart? At the very least, we get a bunch of block at the end of this turn because uh, we didn't use mu that much energy that turn. Thanks to the funnel. All right. Easy. Slam, flail. Uh, 
We can salivate in order to apply vulnerability and weakness here. Lovely. I think I'll defend upgraded strike, strain, decrepit. We'll take a bunch of damage in response to this, but we are now possibly one turn from killing, which is an exciting prospect, to say the least. Okay, it looks like we actually will get the enemy down here. I know, I'm surprised too. You buy Ornate Mirror. Hello? It only took me, uh, 260 HP. <laughs> oh, yikes. We made it through at the very least. Alright. Uh, Feeling like it's probably just a dig. Get the Sundial. Every three times you shuffle your get, uh, deck, rather, gain two energy. Uh, Quantum Egg. Whenever a card is created during combat, it's upgraded. That means that the Grand Sneko cards that are transformed into will be upgraded. We need the Quantum Egg. It is non-negotiable. That is extremely important for us. Uh, I'll also take the Adrenaline Potion just because it's particularly handy. Oh, all the letters are upgraded as well. Wait, aww. The transformed cards aren't upgraded. Damn, wait, are they? No, they're not upgraded, damn. Oh no, my whole hand played itself. All right. It didn't play Shed Fat though, I wonder why. Do I still have another, I do have another shame in there, so I'm about to, I'm about to have a bad time. He's just trying to kill the Spire Shield as quickly as possible there. Obviously, it didn't really work out. I'm not going to use another Eden Alive in this combat. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Deal your damage. Shoot your shot, bud. I have to transform both of them. I have no choice. Uh, I have exactly one debuff, but now I can have two. Hell yeah, that's a bunch of damage right there, not half that. Oh, we've got this. It's just strained, decrepit. Easy. Then... Avarice. Elephant Mask. At the start of each combat, the enemy with the most HP loses uh, 8 strength this turn. That is uh, not relevant for us. We'll take a Fever Visions. At the start of your turn, if you have a debuff, draw one card because this enemy applies a bunch of debuffs to us. So we will just draw extra debuffs. Draw extra cards. Oh my god. We will have a debuff and we will draw extra cards. There we go. Yeah, those are kind of garbage. Strain, and then... Woo! Nice decrepit there. We even get to draw five extra cards next turn. The light bulb and funnel might actually make this a viable thing for us. Okay, so... We only get to transform our naturally drawn hand rather than the extra cards drawn from Eternal Hunger or Light Bulb, it looks like here. What if I move Light Bulb to the front of my party? I wonder if that will have any effect. I suspect not, but gosh, I need to know. Should have played the Eat Alive at the very start of that turn for the extra max HP. That's my bad. Enemy has very little strength. Did I remove their strength at all? I don't remember doing that. Wait, what? 
Elephant Mask doesn't remove their strength the entire match, right? They lose it this turn. Why have they still lost it? Uh, we should also probably move the Papillion Heart and the Sundial out here so that I can actually see their effects. Hey, this is exactly what I was looking for. So we made an Echo of a card that has an effect on its exhaust. So it'll get its normal effect and then play its exhaust effect if I play it. That's what I was looking for like this whole time. I am so jazzed it finally turned up. Uh, okay, I guess I transform these two because I want to be able to devour the shame. So Papillion Heart just stopped. I, okay, cool. Uh, that's going to give me time at the very least to play all the other cards in my hand that I really want to play. Hell, even get some healing out of it. I have to transform these two because it's important that I devour to remove the shame. It's important so that I can use the unceasing top just occasionally. I've only just realized I've run out of cards in my deck now. Oh no. I can't transform the Hunger Pang, and I do have to. Well, I, mean, I have to transform the ones that exhaust cards, right? Because I can never get their effect. There we go, we got some max HP that turn. Yikes! Oh no, I've removed almost every card from my deck. I have to choose those two cards. I don't have any choice. And now we are thoroughly incapable of dealing damage. Ah. All right. Hey, we got Christ of AG and Lash Out at the very least here. Burn a Hunger Pang. If we can get the deck just down to one attack card, we'll be in a good position. If I use that feed, I will never have another card in the deck. I need... I need that feed. I need that feed! Share weakness? I don't even have any weakness right now. I don't have anything to share. Like, I can self-flagellate a hell of a lot and get a bunch of strength. Oh god. Oh no, the wounds! What? It has painful stabs? Oh, we're screwed. I have to transform that card as well. I have no choice. Yeah, we're done. Oh god. What have I done? I knew we weren't going to win this fight, but good lord, I did not know it was for this reason. Why? Wait, what? The Grand Sneko didn't trigger at the start. Oh, right, because these cards, I couldn't transform the statuses, and these cards were drawn at the end. Oh no, but I do need to transform them. That's 120 incoming damage, and we are now dead. That makes a lot of sense. Ow. Well, for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on the game path in the future, as well as a link to the Steam Workshop Collection, where all mods I've played in the past, present, and future of this series have been, will be, are being... Sorry, have been, are, and will be collated. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.